Mike's son, Warren Fletcher, will act as second underwater cameraman. Jacques Marc is explorations director with the Underwater Archaeological Society. And Peter Ross is a diver with the group. A number of sea lions watch with curiosity. Let's get an overall length. Uh, try to get a breadth. Um, albeit, we know that there's only sort of half of her, uh, her width there, but we should be able to extrapolate that. Yes. Um, we planned two dives. The first dive, when Mike was down to take a look along with the Underwater Archaeological Society group, was intended to be a reconnaissance dive, a first look that would tell us just exactly what was down there, how much of the ship had survived, and what types of features were present. This preliminary exploration would enable me to come up with a dive plan for the second dive that would map in the features and look very carefully at all of the diagnostic evidence. This would allow us to conclude whether or not this was the Malay. Dropping down on this site, you're immediately struck with the reality of just how badly deteriorated this shipwreck is. No doubt a result of the wood-consuming worms that are so common in salt water. We really had our work cut out for us. We had to go on a hunt for those tiny little details that would definitely identify this wreck as the Malahat. One of the first things that was obvious, and something that you were almost drawn to, were these struts that were holding a large bearing. I recognized immediately that this would have been the bearing that held a propeller shaft. And on further investigation, I could see there was two of them. We now knew with certainty we had a wooden ship that was powered by twin propellers. That was great evidence of Malahat. But could we find evidence that this wreck was also a sailing ship? That was our next step. One of the objectives of the dive is to determine the wreck's length. The Malahat was 74 meters long. Well, Jacques laid out the tape measure to get an overall length of the site. I decided to swim towards what should have been the bow. I wanted to get a, a really good sense of just how the wreck lay on the bottom. And as I swam forward down that essentially the spine of the ship. I got the sense that I was an underwater paleontologist, and I was investigating the remains of an old dinosaur. And in effect, that's what we were doing. We were, we were trying to find those, those little bits amongst the broken bones that would resurrect this vessel as the Malahat. Traveling down what would have been the Kielsen or the interior keel of the ship, I was really struck with just truly how large this vessel was. One of the more interesting three-dimensional components of the site were what we believed to be fuel tanks. Since we had really good drawings and measurements from Malahat, we realized that the tanks could in effect become a, a signature that could only be matched to one ship. If we could measure the tanks, then we could prove that they could fit theoretically below the decks of Malahat, then we had one more piece of mounting evidence. Yeah. 